All right. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us for our first Tech Talk in 2024. Today, we have Rob Beard here with us, and they're going to talk about the different directions you can take in tech, and um, he'll answer all your questions at the end, but he's got a little presentation in the beginning. So thank you for being here with us and take it away. Awesome. All right, everybody. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, don't know if you all got a chance to virtually meet me or see information on me from LinkedIn or uh, the intro. So I'll just provide a little more context. Um, I've been in the tech field now for uh, 10 years, a little over 10 years. I started my career in the tech staffing space. I was working a lot with a lot of Portland based entities, uh, you know, whether they were government affiliated, uh, commercial accounts, you know, like financial services providers, a lot of, you know, companies like Standard Insurance, Fisher Investments, um, worked a lot with Adidas and Nike, worked with them on their tech staffing programs, um, moved up from there after eight years, uh, moved over to Oracle. I worked at Oracle for uh, the past two years. Um, I'm sure you're familiar with Oracle being in the tech space. That was a lot of fun and worked mainly with their cybersecurity line of businesses, product development line of businesses. Um, and quite a few others, you know, data science, ML. So I got a good idea of um, quite a few different directions and strategies that they were after. Uh, now I work for Ultraviolet Cyber. It is a managed security service provider. I am the uh, lead recruiter running the recruiting department, working on our commercial or federal teams. And we uh, do like SOC as a service, pen test as a service, really anything you could think of as far as uh, cybersecurity services um, our company uh, provides uh, to a lot of clients nationally. Um, but yeah, it was awesome getting the invite to talk to you all. I definitely enjoy and helping people grow their career. And um, I was doing a, a count just the other day. I've, I've just surpassed 800 placements in the uh, 10 years. So met a lot of great people through uh, that experience, a lot of um, learning experience around like how to land jobs, you know, what, what to look for and I'm here as a resource for you all as you look to kick off things uh, with your tech careers. Um, so yeah, I got this uh, deck together. Can everybody see it? All good? Yep. That's all right, cool. good. All right. Yes. Uh, this is a little bit about the UV Cyber Company, uh, just in case anybody does have, you know, any interest in the cybersecurity field, I'm really passionate about it. As I mentioned, I really built my uh, tech you know, recruiting career in this space. Uh, but we've formed last year of, after acquiring four of these companies. So I did want to give this overview is uh, if you are looking to learn more about uh, managed security services and understanding what that looks like, how to break into that field, um, happy to answer any questions at the end of this. Um, as it, in regards to it. Yeah. Awesome. So yeah, as a lot of you, I understand are looking to kickstart your tech career. I uh, just wanted to go through a checklist of items, things that you should always be, you know, have front of mind uh, for you, you know, as you're looking to build this out. Um, number one suggestion, I think in, in any field that you're trying to break into is find a mentor. So whether that's somebody in a hiring chair or even in an IC individual contributor chair, somebody that is in the field now, you can pick their brain, they can direct you on maybe different certifications to go after, different trainings. Um, but you know, as most people get jobs, it's always through the people you know. And if you have a great mentor, somebody that's gonna take you under their wing, um, that should yield some great results landing your, your first gig or even you know, gigs down the road. Um, other checklist items, you know, find meetups in your area. We can talk about some in Portland if you'd like. You know, those are great opportunities to network with other folks in the that industry or that specific space that you're interested in. Uh, explore job postings. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about this through today, but, you know, there's ways you can set alerts on things like Indeed, Dice, LinkedIn. Um, I did see a stat just the other day that uh, 85, they, they think about 85% of job postings out there are now coming through in through LinkedIn. So that is really a, a hot market for you to get to know and understand that tool and how it's going to benefit you. Um, using ChatGPT, great tool for writing resumes. Um, I know employers are using them for writing job descriptions now. Uh, candidates like yourselves, you can use it to help write your resume and craft that out. Um, pursue boot camps, you know, tech academies, certifications. <clears throat> 
Uh, there's a variety of ways you can go, but those are all great things. And Tech Academy is obviously is, is one of them. Treat every contact with care and professionalism. I think a lot of people take relationships for granted and don't know that maybe down the road, those relationships will come back to you and you know, could pay dividends um, you know, years from now. So always treat those with care. Uh, get active on LinkedIn. And, and what I mean by that is by just, you know, getting posts out there to what you're learning. Um, find different groups through LinkedIn that interest you. Um, maybe follow some people that are posting thought-provoking posts and material content that you can relate to. Um, but you definitely want to get active and, you know, set those alerts on employers you're interested in, job postings you're interested in. Uh, that's where you're going to land your next position. Uh, set up a home lab. That's a great way for you to sharpen, sharpen the skills at home, whether it's installing Linux, standing up your own servers, building out your own your private network. Uh, maybe it's, you know, developing your own applications at home. There's a lot of things you can do at home that you want to, as you're kicking off your career, you want to be able to showcase that in your resume and talk to employers about. And the last uh, check item here, get to know the staffing companies in your area. Um, I know that's where I came from, but, you know, a lot of times, you know, the staffing companies are there as a resource for you and they can get you, you know, whether it's a contract or an opportunity to get your foot in the door at a great employer. A lot of employers these days, they do like that contract to hire model staffing companies. They, that's what they are pushing for. Um, but yeah, you really want to get to know them and understand how to be on their radar so they can present you to their clients. A lot of times companies are paying them to get, you know, the best people out there. And uh, it's, it would be a great resource for you. Now, here are um, just some, you know, these are positions that I think are the some of the hottest areas. I left out obviously quite a few. The tech space, it encompasses a lot of different avenues and skill sets. Um, but here are quite a few that are in demand right now. As you can see, there's DevOps. Uh, we'll talk about a little bit software engineering site reliability engineering, cloud engineering, security engineer, security analyst. So again, I, I'm leaving off quite a few different skill sets, things like data science, machine learning. Uh, you know, there's always, you know, pen testers, red team and blue team on the security side. Um, but yeah, let's, let's kind of break these down one by one. Uh, DevOps engineering. So this is a space, uh, if you don't know, it has really grown in popularity over the last 10 years. Um, really represents, as you can see, a combo of uh, development teams and operations teams working together. Uh, essentially, it's, it's helping get code out faster, more reliable. Um, well, you know, I just did a uh, statistics, you know, got some insights on LinkedIn. There currently are 3,728 postings right now for DevOps engineers. Um, there's definitely a demand. These roles are becoming more and more remote based um, because they are competitive for employers. And that is what Canada Pool is looking for. But here are also some certifications that, you know, I know that employers are seeking uh, that will also really uplift your skill set as you're looking to grow in this space. So like uh, getting a Docker certified associate certification, AWS DevOps engineer, uh, Kubernetes administrator, the HashiCorp Terraform. Those are some really uh, hot technologies that are go ha going hand in hand with a lot of DevOps positions out there. Um, last thing to say on DevOps, it is just about every company out there will have its own definition of what it is, but at its core, it's bringing development and operations together and culturally changing how you release and manage uh, code. Uh, software engineering, as you, you might know, might not know, there's a few different veins you can go here whether it's app development, you know, system software development, front end, back end, there's full stack. Um, there's a plethora of these postings out there of 115,000. That's, you know, quite a bit. So I know that uh, as the digital age continues to grow, software engineering skills are going to be uh, continuing to be in demand. Um, there's quite a few relevant certifications. The list is way too long to list in the software engineering uh, field there. So I left that blank. But um, you can really pick up, you know, certs in security that would, you know, translate over to, you know, security software and engineering. You could pick up some DevOps, you know, certifications that'll uplift your skills there. But um, obviously a lot of opportunity in software space. SRE, site reliability engineering. Um, a lot of times this looks a lot like a DevOps role. 
and sometimes like a cloud engineering role. Uh, those three positions, DevOps, SRE, cloud engineering, they often blur. But you could think of the SRE position as uh, one where it works with already built in software to ensure it functions correctly and cooperates with other software and systems. The SREs typically are there for uh, monitoring, you know, application performance monitoring. They're doing service reliability and availability, making sure that uh, the environment is up and running, kind of like what a cloud engineer does, as you can see there, build, maintain cloud infrastructures while they're migrating or implementing, monitoring cloud-based services. Um, between them, there's quite a few postings there as well, uh, both over 4,000. Oh. Sorry, I jumped ahead. Um, and yeah, so these certs are definitely relevant for these those positions here. Um, OCI, that's uh, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. Uh, that's really picking up a lot of steam versus AWS, Azure, and then of course there's a uh, Google Cloud. You know, those are the top providers for cloud services. You can pick up a lot of those uh, companies. They do offer free courses, um, some low cost certifications. Those would be great to pick up as you're looking to kickstart your career. Uh, moving into, into the cyber security space, there's engineering and analysts. Uh, people often, just about all the time, every time will get in at the analyst level. Um, SOC analysts, for example, is a great opportunity for people to get their foot in the door in the cyberspace. So SOC stands for Security Operations Center. Usually a SOC is there to uh, do 24 seven monitoring and maintenance of you know, threats, incidents, reporting them, doing triage to other engineers and incident responders. Uh, SOCs usually have uh, different tiers. You know, tier one is that kind of entry level position. Um, an entry level SOC analyst, you know, you're gonna wanna have the uh, CompTIA Security Plus cert listed there, even the CompTIA Network Plus, Linux Plus, those are great entry level certifications to pick up. Um, and then let's see, there's, uh, yeah, so you can see the engineers, you know, they would do more of the implementation, the upgrading of security measures. Um, you could work more on implementing the tools for maybe a SOC, or you could be maybe, you know, running the network security for a company. So running the firewalls, there's a few different directions you could go as a security engineer, but uh, both of these space, these professions are growing exponentially. Um, I know just a few years ago, I saw a stat uh, that by, I think it was 2025, there would be 500,000 openings in the field. Um, it's certainly growing to look like that. Now that I'm on the uh, working for MSSP, I can tell you there's a, a ton of demand out there from companies to get you know, great talented people in and work with partners that have great uh, people in house already. But, um, you know, Splunk certifications, I called that out. You know, Splunk is kind of the de facto SIEM tool, security incident event management tool out there. Um, you can really do a lot by just being a Splunk user or even a Splunk administrator. Those are great skills to pick up um, if you're looking to go in that direction. But again, cybersecurity that has, you know, you could think of it as like red teaming, blue teaming. There's the offensive, which is red team, defensive, which is more blue team. Um, there's two directions there you could go in itself, um, a lot to explore. Mm -hmm. And here wanted to fit in uh, how to engage with recruiters and hiring managers. Uh, excuse my typo there. But uh, you know, personalization, you want to really personalize your outreach to whether it's a recruiter or a hiring manager at a given company. So don't use those auto-generated outreach messages. Uh, I think LinkedIn has AI behind you know, their technology and will recommend a way to outreach. Uh, you know, recruiters, hiring managers, we see that same message over and over again. You know, craft it to make it sound more like you. Um, after interviews or screenings, you, know, you want to have your thank you, follow up, you know, usually no more than a week would be, you know, appropriate. You really want to pursue positions that meet your requirements. You know, this is something that I know recruiters will keep a really keen eye on. Is this person just throwing a resume out there or are they really targeting things that they are, you know, confident and qualified for? Um, you, want to, you want to engage through LinkedIn. Here's a LinkedIn comment again. You, know, you have a photo up, make your about summary, you know, get that content in there. 
Describe the projects you worked on, list your certifications, list your skills, and then capture some recommendations. You know, ask people to write recommendations for you, whether they're, they're your mentor, as I mentioned, or maybe they're a professor or somebody from one of the boot camps. You, know, you want people to you know, start acknowledging how you know, hard of a worker you are, great learner, all those other soft skills could be highlighted. Um, when you get your interview, you want to show that you studied the company, studied the role. You want to know the mission statement. You understand the values, the product, the service that the company is offering. Um, be familiar with their website and have some questions ready on that. And then obviously with the job posting language, you want to be able to match your pitch. You want to be able to match uh, your pitch to the responsibilities and requirements they list. And then have your distinguishing characteristics ready. So why did this career path make sense for you? What sets you apart? What have you learned? Um, you know, a lot of people are in the air, this field for, for growth or career change. Um, but it's like, what, what about tech speaks to you? You know, why are you motivated, you know, for the position? You really want to have that dialogue locked down and ready. Here's a slide on uh, preparing, preparing for your interview. So this is the STAR method. Um, I think it's a great method for people to prep uh, for your dialogue you're going to have with your potential hiring manager, your potential company. So the STAR is an acronym. The S is, you know, as you can see here, situation. T is for task. A is for action. R is for result. So with the situation, as you're thinking about how you're going to respond to specific questions, maybe a question could be like, you know, tell me about some experience where you had to learn something on the fly. Well, you would break down the situation that you were in. You would talk about you know, what you were tasked with learning. You know, what did you do to, to actually learn, you know, whatever it was. And then how did it benefit the company or the project that you were working on? But this is a great method and great way for you to um, just find clarity in your answers and really help the interviewer understand holistically who they're talking to and how you think about problem solving and, and you know, approaching uh, different you know, questions that might come from the business even when you get hired. And that's just about it. So I'm opening it up here for some questions uh, to anybody if you have any. All right. So feel free to leave your questions in chat or unmute your mic and ask questions that way. Really, however you prefer. Hello, Brian. Go for it. Um, I have We're a question. A hard time. Okay, go for it. I'm sorry. I have a question because I am trying to pivot into a career of cybersecurity, but I have a background in voice and networking. So I'm currently working on two certif well, one certification, the Google um security foundations for security which they say will also help me with the security plus which is definitely my aim as mm -hmm. far as getting hands-on because that's not really my area of expertise what is the best thing i can do as far as setting up a home network or what should i do to really get hands-on yeah that's a great question well i would say that um you know the google certification that is unique for companies that might have Google implemented in their environment, you know, they're running uh, maybe Google instances. Um, I don't, it doesn't appear Google has the biggest, um, I would say footprint in the market. So, but I would say the security plus is definitely one that uh, is more applicable and much more general as far as fundamentals. So I would, I would recommend to lean towards the security plus, I think in the eyes of a hiring manager or recruiter, you know, you're going to want, they're, we're going to rather we'd rather see that certification as far as getting the hands on experience, you know, things like, you know, setting up your own uh, maybe PCAP tools like packet capture analysis. I would think maybe you might have some you know, networking fundamentals in there. You know, those are things that you could maybe start practicing at home. Um, but then again, you know, I know the security plus getting that certification, there is some kind of relative hands on work you got to do and knowledge you have to have to complete that cert. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. It looks <clears throat> like we have two more questions. So Adnan, why, uh, Adnan, why don't you go first? 
Uh, yes, uh, my name is Adnan Malik and I have a question uh, that I was uh, working on ML models, machine learning models from last, uh, I think, two years. Uh, I'm mainly working on the Python and mainly do the training and testing of the data sets. But last three months, uh, I now shifted on e-commerce website because of the my uncle has some uh, e-commerce business and I want to join him on the e-commerce business. So I am confusing between two fields. Uh, I was doing well in my ML models, but uh, he's forcing me to come on his e-commerce business. So what's the comparison more best option uh, for me uh, in the future? Either ML model excel more uh, or I should have to continue with the ML models and, and machine learning, uh, which I am doing from the last years. Yeah, um, I think if I understand the question correct, you kind of had a pivot. You don't, you don't know which one to target. Is that right? Maybe which career path to go down? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I would say that uh, machine learning is, uh, as you know, it's it's a growing field. And I think that a lot of employers are trying to get a grip for how they're going to leverage you know, machine learning in their environment. Um, a lot of times, you know, it seems that more of the big tech companies have a better grip on how they're going to, you know, leverage ML and, and AI and these things. So as they release different products, you know, they're going to want to, um, you know, have people that understand how to build out those models, how to analyze, you know, the data sets that come through. I would, I think it's an evolving field that is going to keep increasing in demand. Um, I think not knowing enough about the e-commerce opportunity you have, it, it's hard for me to, to say, but I would I would recommend you know maybe continue to pursue ML, uh, pursue data science as a whole. Make sure you understand you know, the theory behind it. You know you make sure you understand you know different you know, large language sets. Uh, I think you know voice. I know Oracle was always talking about you know voice and language models. That was going to be the, the future for that their business, which I'm sure Amazon and Microsoft are also talking about too. Facebook. So you. you I would say, you know, staying in the ML space would be definitely beneficial for you. Um, as you look at employers, you know, look at those big tech companies, whether it's internships they have or like level one roles as you're looking to get your foot in the door. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Great. Next question. I think Wes was first, but I apologize if Wes, you were first, but go ahead, Wes. Okay. Um, hi, Rob. Uh, thanks for, for sharing all the information you had. Um, you had mentioned at the beginning about um, that you've worked with tons of staffing companies and, and worked for them. What's I, I've worked um, for the past nine months as a software engineer and then had an internship before then. Um, but what's the best way to sort of uh, capture the attention of a recruiter on LinkedIn or wherever? Um, mm. I've had I've had a couple reach out to me, um, but not not that many. Yeah, yeah, great question. So um, first, you know, I think we got to understand there's you know kind of the in-house. Uh, some people call it corporate recruiting, and then there's you know agency recruiting. So there's kind of there's those are two sides. Agency is always working on the demand of various companies and accounts that they have, so they're representing a lot more than just one company where the corporate in-house, as it sounds, they represent that one company. So I think you're going to want to have a nice blend between the two. Um, if you're earlier in your career, you, know, you want to get to know who those top staffing agency companies are. And you, you know, you could do something as easy as you know, calling in. I remember when I worked at uh, tech systems, um, I got a lot, we had a lot of people calling in and, you know, just wanting to meet with, you know, us to talk about our accounts and what companies you know we're working with. Um, so that's one option. Do the call in. Um, you could find them on LinkedIn by just searching, you know, tech systems uh, for employer, and then look at like role or title recruiter, and maybe find a few people that have you know a nice profile, and you could just write them you know a personalized note to each of them. Um, but as, as I mentioned, you're looking to, to grow your career. I don't know how many years of experience you have. I would, I would definitely recommend going that route, the staffing route, getting to know who those players are in the area. Um, 
if you I don't know if you're in Portland, but if you are, I, I could kind of give you some insight who maybe to contact. Yeah. That, that would be great. I'm I'm in Portland, Oregon. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I would say you know Tech Systems. Um, you know, definitely ran a good ship. Uh, Randstad is a good one to get in contact with. Vanderhelen. Yep. I've reached out to yep. them. Yep. Yep. Now work. Um, <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, Apex um, is one I've reached out to. Apex, K Force, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So. Okay. Yeah, and you have you have a nice cover letter ready? You know, send it out to them. Personalize it. Everybody wants to personalize the approach. Okay. And then when you go in for your, you know, if it's an in-office interview, you're going to meet them for coffee. You know, obviously, you know, dress professional and be on your A game because it it basically is an interview. Yeah. Is that um, reaching out and? uh having a meeting is in person um is that expected i've done that with with um people that i meet at meetups all the time but i wasn't sure about uh recruiters necessarily yeah i think sometimes a lot of times you know the recruiters would like to meet in person i know when i Great. was in that staffing i i love meeting with people and building that relationship on the front end and um you know i i remember I had met an individual named Dave. He was one of the first people I met in that recruiting field. And I, I met Dave early on in about 2013 and I ended up finding him a position in 2015. And okay. it was all because Wonderful. of that relationship we built, you know, two years before then. Okay. Okay. Great. Thanks, Rob. No problem. All right. It looks like Forrest is next. So go ahead with your question. Oh, well, thanks for the talk again. Uh, just had a more of a resume question on the side. Uh, I've been a software developer for the past about three, four years. Been working this with this one company for the past like two years, and I know for um, resume writing, you know, the whole going over the whole like action verbs and whatnot. But I know for a fact in my past career. Because I was a salesperson, I was able to basically quantify each bullet point mm -hmm. in actual numbers. But at my current job, I'm just basically the guy that people come to within the company. It's like, hey, we need this really custom thing. Can you just go build it? And on yeah. terms of translating that onto the resume, I just really can't find a way to quantify that in a sense. So... Do you have any strategies or tips on how to quantify something within the software field on the resume that's not really quantifiable? Yeah. Yeah, great question for us. Yeah, I would say that um, some things to think about, like how many users are there of that software? You know, is it in-house or is it external facing? Um, I think that's easy one way to quantify it. I would say um, how many releases you were a part of, how many updates and releases um how long it took to actually go from the planning you know development to actual release you know, maybe that's something you could list there uh, but you know things you know accomplishments are always great things to list in a resume i think you know if you were received an award or recognition through some of the work that you've done that's always something to put as like the top bullet point you know under that employer but yeah, you're right. Quantifying, you know, software positions, it is difficult. I would say that, you know, users focus on that number of releases. Um, maybe you can talk about how, how large maybe the software was. If it has like a database, it, it you know, links to. Uh, those are some things you could kind of articulate as far as like size of it. Yeah. Oh, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other questions? Yes, I don't see anything, but let us know if you do. Also, Rob, is your LinkedIn a great place for people to connect with you if they do have questions after this presentation? Yeah, actually. Yeah, I just put um, this here. I know you can't necessarily oh, yeah, copy it. That that. That. Yeah. I put it um, in there. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, I put my work email there. If if you are interested in the cyber field, feel free to drop me a line. Um, 
but yeah, I think LinkedIn's a great, great place for all of us to connect. And if you have any other questions, I'm happy to take time and answer them and help you with some career you know, guidance. Well, said Kimberly actually has a question. So uh, I have a certif certification in cybersecurity from a six month boot camp as well as the AWS certification cloud. Uh, it's been so hard to find anything, but I would love to start as a SOC analyst. Does location matter? I'm starting to think remote work still looks at location. Yeah, I would say that is that is the thing to think about for um, these kind of entry level type positions is that they're very competitive. There's a lot of people that are getting there, trying to get their foot in the door. So yeah, I think shooting only for remote roles, it's really going to limit you. When you see, when you get a re remote role versus an on-site role, you know, oftentimes we're going to get at least 10 times the applicants. Um, for instance, I had a remote uh, SOC analyst position recently that I was hiring for. Within a couple of days, I had uh, over 200 applications to get through. Um, if I left that open for another week, I would have well been over a well thousand. So... I think it, when you're looking at getting your first analyst level position, um, try to find an on-site role. You know that's going to be a lot less applicants, um, and it, it's really going to give you an opportunity to build the relationships that you need to grow into your next tier or maybe an engineering job. Um, I think that remote work is very attractive for a lot of people, but you know. The reality is, is that it's it's hard to show your value and you know be present with your team. And at that point, it's just it's harder to move up the ladder and get things like promotions. So hopefully, I answered your question right there. I would I would definitely recommend looking at the on-site positions if you have locations you're interested in relocating to. Make alerts on analyst level positions. You know, in those areas, you can do those alerts through Indeed or LinkedIn. And just be open-minded as you're looking to get your foot in the door and kickstart this career. Awesome, great. Uh, also, looks like Ednan has another question. So go ahead with your question. Uh, yes, uh, uh, I'm in last year of my university. I'm actually pursuing computer science degree, bachelor's of science in computer science, and we are doing our final year project. And our project is sales forecasting tool using ML. And we are using ML to make a sales forecasting tool. And we know that we will not actually complete this, make this a complete uh, running model. It, it's just a draft model because we are a student in this stage and we cannot make an end product that can be sellable or that can be utilizable. So after doing this final year project and making this draft product, how can we attract, uh, I mean, industrial people to work with us, to help us, to collab with us, and how we can find that opportunities uh, so that they can collab with us and they guide us how we can uh, take this into the uh, to, to the completeness. And after the FIP project, how can we take this thing into the market that can showcase our skills and all these things? I would love to, if you answer this question. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah. So it, it sounds like you all are building this, um, you know, product in, in maybe a lab environment, lab setting. Um, I don't know, have you checked with the university to see if they have any connections or if there's uh, maybe like a, a, a donor program or anything to be a part of? Because you know, if you haven't checked there, maybe maybe that might be a good option. Um, I'm trying to think creatively to answer that question. It's yeah, it's that, that's a hard one for me to answer, to be honest. But I would think that, uh, you know, if you have a good product that you've developed, a good software, you know, promoting it through through your network, through, you know, mentors, through uh, the university to see if they could help, that's probably the best best route. But other than that, yeah, I'm afraid, I, I don't know if I can answer, a, you know, give you a great answer for that. Can I share the details of project with you through email or something? Sure. Yeah. Pleasure. My email is right there. You're more Thank than welcome you so to. Much. Thanks. Yeah. Great. Thank you. So yeah, let us know if you guys have more questions.
but also just to let you guys know, we are recording this presentation and I will be posting it later today or tomorrow to our YouTube channel. Here is the playlist where it's going to be posted in. Um, also, we do have another event later today and I will be in that event. It's actually hosted by our co-founder and he's gonna do a free JavaScript free class. So if you're interested in JavaScript, it's very beginner friendly. So if you'd like to join, here is a link for that as well. But uh, I don't see any more questions. Any final thoughts, Rob? No, no, I mean, this is, this is nice talking to you all. Um, great questions. And yeah, it's uh, a lot of people are get, looking to get their foot in the door. So, you know, just keep finding ways to make yourselves attract, you know, attractive and, and, uh, and all that. But thank you all for your time. Yeah, thank you so much for being here. Um, and I hope everyone stays safe out there and stays warm. And I know a lot of people are actually getting sick as well. So stay safe. And I'll see you guys later today if you guys want to join us. Thank you, Rob. Yep, my pleasure. Take care. See you. All right, thank you guys for joining. And I'll see you guys soon. Uh, JC, I don't know if you're still here. It looks like you're not. All right. See you guys later.